In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Please be seated. May we call Lieutenant Ambassador Jose El Quisha Jr. and Lieutenant of Honor Ambassador Jesus P. Tambunting OBE to stand as witnesses to the installation of His Eminence Jose Fuerte Cardinal Advincula Jr. as Grand Prior of the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre Philippine Lieutenancy. I invite His Eminence, Jose Fuerte Cardinal Advincula Jr., Archbishop of Manila, to stand before His Excellency, Archbishop Charles John Brown, for the installation proper. According to Article 27, Section 2 of the Constitution of the Equestrian Order, of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem. The Grand Prior assists the Lieutenant and cooperates with him in the spiritual direction of the Lieutenancy, is its spiritual guide, issues directives, and follows the action of the Priors of the sections and local delegations. Dear brother in Christ, you are about to become Grand Prior of the Lieutenancy for Manila. It is a commitment that is added to the Episcopal office to which the Holy Father has assigned you. Belonging to the Church of Christ as bishops, we feel that we continue the work of the apostles who always had at heart the places where the Lord lived, died, and resurrected and diligently cared for the body of Christ, living in the early community of believers. We are called to continue with zeal the love for the land of Jesus and all those who live there through the order of the Holy Sepulcher, as desired by the Supreme Pontiffs. It also involves our brothers who, with dedication, undertake the commitment to support good works for the Holy Land. This will be a reason for joy among the pastoral responsibilities entrusted to you. May the Lord accompany you and sustain you. Do you accept this commitment? I accept. The decree will now be read. Decree of appointment as Grand Prior, Fernando Cardinal Filoni of the Holy Roman Church, Grand Master, of the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem, employing the faculties which the reigning Supreme Pontiff has successfully granted to us to supervise the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem and desirous that the Order may flourish for the good of the Church as much as possible, with the favorable opinion of the dignity of the Great Magisterium we appoint and bestow on you, Jose Fuerte Cardinal Advincula, Archbishop of Manila, the title of Grand Prior of this order in the Philippines. By virtue of the present decree, therefore, all the rights, functions, and privileges are available to you and must be exercised in accordance with the constitution of this order. This will be valid for four years from this day in the Vatican City on the 2nd of August in the year 2021.
Let us welcome with a round of applause our Grand Prior of the Order, His Eminence Jose Fuerte Cardinal Advincula Jr. Please all stand. We will now witness the handling of the certificate to His Eminence from Ambassador Tambunting and Ambassador Kuisha. In the sacred context dedicated by the liturgy, we are now carrying out the traditional ceremony of our order, the investiture of new knights and new dames. Participation in the ceremony renews in all knights and dames the profound sense of belonging to the order and the full sharing of the ideals of faith and charity. May our common prayer, which we entrust to the Virgin Mary, Mother of the Risen Christ and Queen of Palestine, be of help to those who today embark on the new path by becoming part of the equestrian order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem. Let us pray. O Father, who sanctifies your church in every people and nation, spread the gifts of the Holy Spirit to the ends of the earth, 
and continue in the community of believers the wonders you wrought at the beginning of the preaching of the gospel. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. May we request the knights and dames awaiting investiture to please remain standing. For everyone else, please all be seated. May we call Chancellor Knight Commander Emmanuel G. Urbosa to read the decree. We shall now read the decree with which the Grand Master of the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem has appointed the following knights and dames who will receive investiture today. The very noble Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem, already founded in ancient times to guard and honor the sepulchre of our Divine Redeemer in Jerusalem, was always the object of special benevolence on the part of the Roman pontiffs, as numerous testimonies clearly attest. Pope Pius IX and his successors wanted to adopt the order to the concrete needs of the times, establishing that it be conferred with honor both to lay people, men and women, and to clerics who were worthy of the land of our Lord Jesus, or were willing to offer their work of piety and charity. And this was confirmed by the Supreme Pontiff Leo XIII, with further provision, keeping all this in mind and making use of the faculty that we have been granted as Grand Master by the Supreme Pontiff happily reigning His Holiness Pope Francis, that is, to assign diplomas to lay people and clerics who are to be named to the equestrian order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem by virtue of these powers, we then elect, appoint, and proclaim. Jill John de las Peñas, Maria Cristina Raimundo Legaspi, Beryl Ang Lim, Nanette Valmores Olivares, Maria Cristina Lee Tihanki, Madeline Balagtas Tuviera, Lea Uy Yolo, Jose Enrique de los Reyes de las Peñas, Romeo Chanco Javier Jr., Giovanni Uzcaya Olivares, Antonio Calilanque, Antonio Pablo Tuviera, and Ramon Tayag Yolo. We grant you the faculty to wear the insignia of chivalry according to the degree proper to your dignity, together with all the favors and prerogatives enjoyed by members who, like you, hold the same dignity in said order. In testimony whereof, we have ordered that the diplomas be prepared and signed with our signature and affixed with the necessary seals. Vatican City, from the City of the Order. The Knights and Dames candidates for investiture will now present themselves. Dear brothers and sisters, what do you ask of our order? The Apostolic See, and in particular the Roman Pontiffs, have always had a heart, had always had at heart the holy places in the Holy Land, in particular 
the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. That is the memorial of the mystery of the life and the death of the Lord and his glorious resurrection. The equestrian order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem was established long ago for the custody of this holy place and for the care of the faithful in the land of the Lord and of pilgrims. Becoming a knight or dame means dedicating your life with commitment to profess the faith of Christ through witness, generosity, and love for the gospel. This implies placing Jesus Christ at the center of our existence and of every personal, family, and social project. It means believing in the redemptive power of the cross and the resurrection to offer hope and peace to the world and particularly to the land of Jesus. An ancient bond therefore ties us to the perennial memory of the places of the crucifixion, death, and resurrection of the Lord, and to the pastoral charity of the Church in the Holy Land. Are you ready to accept this ideal in your life? We are ready. Every man and woman must follow their own upright conscience, illuminated by faith, and striving always for truth, justice, and honesty. A knight and a dame of the order of the Holy Sepulchre must always strive to achieve the perfection of the Christian life and show themselves worthy of the dignity they receive in baptism and with which they are clothed. They ought to speak proudly of belonging to Christ and collaborate to uphold the good name of the order. Are you ready to live our Christian faith fully and to behave everywhere and always in such a way as to uphold the ideals and commitments undertaken today in honor of Christ and His Church? We are ready. Are you ready to promise with your word and with your heart that you will observe the constitution of our order, we declare and promise with the help of divine grace and trusting in the protection of the Blessed Virgin Mary to observe the commitments of our order. Be therefore faithful and generous knights and dames of the order of the Holy Sepulchre. Know how to preserve the great richness of the values of the past while living the present intensely, committing yourselves to today, looking toward the future, opening horizons of hope to give a more human face to society and to make Christ the heart of the world. May we call Lieutenant Knight Commander Ambassador Jose L. Quisha Jr. and Archbishop Charles John Brown to assist in the donning of the cloak and the pinning of the medals. Jill John de las Peñas.
by virtue of the mandate conferred upon me, I constitute and proclaim you, Jill Johns de las Peñas, the name of the Order of the Holy Sepulchre of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. May it protect you and be for you a sign of honor and pledge of eternal glory. Amen. Maria Cristina Raimundo Legaspi. By virtue of the mandate conferred upon me, I constitute and proclaim you, Maria Cristina Raimundo Ligaspi, a dame of the Order of the Holy Sepulchre of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. May it protect you and be for you a sign of honor and pledge of eternal glory. Amen. Beryl Ang Lim. By virtue of the mandate conferred upon me, I constitute and proclaim you, Beryl Ang Lim, a dame of the Order of the Holy Sepulchre of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. May it protect you and be for you a sign of honor and pledge of eternal glory. Amen. Nanette Valmores Olivares. By virtue of the mandate conferred upon me, I constitute and proclaim you, a dame of the order of the Holy Sepulchre of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. May it protect you and be for you a sign of honor and pledge of eternal glory. Maria Cristina Lee Tihanki. By virtue of the mandate conferred upon you, I constitute and proclaim you, Maria Cristina Lee Tihanki, a dame of the order of the Holy Sepulchre of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. May it protect you and be for you a sign of honor and pledge of eternal glory. Amen.
Madeleine Balagtas Tuviera. By virtue of the mandate conferred upon me, I constitute and proclaim you, Madeline Balagtas Tuviera, the name of the Order of the Holy Sepulchre of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. May it protect you and be for you a sign of honor and pledge of eternal glory. By virtue of the mandate conferred upon me, I constitute and proclaim you, Leia Uy Yolo, a dame of the order of the Holy Sepulchre of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. May it protect you and be for you a sign of honor and pledge of eternal glory. Amen. José Enrique de los Reyes de la Peñas.
by virtue of the mandate con conferred upon me, I constitute and proclaim you, Jose Enrique de los Reyes de las Peñas, a knight of the Order of the Holy Sepulchre of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. May it protect you and be for you a sign of honor and pledge of eternal glory. Amen. Romeo Chanco Javier Jr. By virtue of the mandate conferred upon me, I constitute and proclaim you Romeo Chanco Javier Jr., a knight of the Order of the Holy Sepulchre of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. May it protect you and be for you a sign of honor and pledge of eternal glory. Amen. Giovanni Husgaya Olivares. By virtue of the mandate conferred upon me, I constitute and proclaim you, Giovanni. Fusgaya Olivares, a knight of the Order of the Holy Sepulchre of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
receive the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. May it protect you and be for you a sign of honor and pledge of eternal glory. Antonio Kaulian Ke. By virtue of the mandate conferred upon me, I constitute and proclaim you at Antonio Kawilanke, a knight of the Order of the Holy Sepulchre of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Receive the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. May it protect you and be for you a sign of honor and pledge of eternal glory. Amen. Antonio Pablo Tuviera. By virtue of the mandate conferred upon me, I constitute and proclaim you, Antonio Pablo Tuviera, a knight of the Order of the Holy Sepulchre of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, and may it protect you and be for you a sign of, of honor and pledge of eternal glory. Amen.
Rowen Tayag Yolo By virtue of the mandate conferred upon me, I constitute and proclaim you, Rowan Tayag Yolo, a knight of the Order of the Holy Sepulchre of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. May it protect you and be for you a sign of honor and pledge of eternal glory. Amen. Can we ask the newly invested knights and dames to please rise? Now that you are knights and dames of the Holy Sepulchre, try to emulate those who, with living faith, provided for the needs of the body of Christ, watch over it, and later became also privileged witnesses of the resurrection of Christ. Following their example, express with the works of your faith the sense of the love of Jesus, which has no limit. May Mary, Mother of the Lord and of the Church, assist you in your mission and grant you always to have at heart the words and places where Christ passed helping and healing. It is our vow. May the Divine Redeemer and the Virgin Mary grant us the necessary grace. Your Eminence, Your Excellencies, Knights, Dames, Ladies and Gentlemen, please all stand and welcome the new Knights and Dames of the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem, Lieutenancy of the Philippines. Dame Jill John de la Peñas, Dame Maria Cristina Raimundo Legaspi, Dame Beryl Ang Lim, Dame Nanette Valmores Olivares, Dame Maria Cristina Lim Tihanki, Dame Madeline Balagtas Tuviera, Dame Lea Uyolo, Knight Jose Enrique de los Reyes de la Peñas, Knight Romeo Chanco Javier Jr., Knight Giovanni Guzgaya Olivares, Knight Antonio Caulian Que, Knight Antonio Pablo Tuviera, Knight Rowan Tayag Yolo. Can we ask the new knights and dames to please turn around to be acknowledged? Thank you. Knights and dames, you, you may now be seated. May we call Lieutenant of Honor, Ambassador Jesus P. Tambunting OBE, 
to join Archbishop Brown and Lieutenant Ambassador Jose Elquisha Jr. to stand as witnesses to the investiture of His Excellency Knight Commander-Elect Most Reverend Milo Hubert Claudio Vergara. Receive these symbols adorned with the saving cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. They represent for you a reminder of your particular responsibilities as bishop in guarding the flock of Christ entrusted to your care. Receiving investiture to your pastoral duties is also added that of having at heart the spiritual activities of the members of our order. Following the example of Christ, serve the brothers and sisters you meet on your path generously. Your action and your example should instill a particular inclination for the land of Jesus and for the mystery of salvation, encouraging them to an ever more generous commitment to prayer and charity. Peace be with you and with your spirit. Can we invite the newly promoted Knights and Dames Commanders to come up to the altar as their names are called to receive the blessing of His Eminence. Dame Commander Helen C. Limcauco. Dame Commander Esther Pampolina Magleo. Knight Commander Carmelino Pahati Alvendia. Knight Commander Jose Teodoro Katigbak Limcauco. 
and Knight Commander Alberto Solon Villarosa. Please all rise. May we request His Excellency Knight Commander Bishop Vergara to join the rest of the commanders, please. Your Eminence, Your Excellencies, Knights and Dames, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome and congratulate also with our applause the newly promoted Knights and Dames Commanders of the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem, Lieutenancy of the Philippines. Please welcome your new Commanders. Knight and Dames, Commanders, you may now go back to your seats. O oh, Father, who wished to save men with the cross of Christ your Son and poured out the Holy Spirit of, on the Church, grant us who have known your mystery of love on earth to enjoy the fruits of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Please rise and let us join the choir in singing the entrance hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. O God, who reward faithful souls, and who have consecrated this day by the martyrdom of Pope St. John I, graciously hear the prayers of your people, and grant that we, who venerate his merits, may imitate his constancy in the faith through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who have come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and presbyters about this question. They were sent on their journey by the church and passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, telling of the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the brethren. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church as well as by the apostles and the presbyters. And they reported that God had done with them. But some of the party of the Pharisees, who had become believers, stood up and said, It is necessary to circumcise them and direct them to observe the Mosaic law. The apostles and the presbyters met together to see about his master. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing. I rejoice because they said to me, We will go up to the house of the Lord, and now we have set foot within your grace, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel, I give thanks to the name of the Lord. In it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Please all rise. I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me will bear much fruit.
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my fa father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does he prunes, so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. His Excellency, Most Reverend Charles Brown, Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines, His Grace, Most Reverend Jose S. Palma, Archbishop of Cebu, His Grace, Most Reverend Socrates Villegas, Archbishop of Lingay and Dagupan, His Excellency, most Reverend Milo Hubert Vergara, Bishop of Pasig, His Excellency Ambassador Jose Quisha, Brother Priests and Deacons, Members of the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre, Dearly Beloved in Christ. Farewells and Goodbyes are always difficult and painful. When we love someone, we give a part of ourselves to the beloved. The void and the space left behind because of parting seems to become an aching and gaping wound. The deeper the love, the greater the agony and anguish we experience in parting. The disciples in the Gospel episode are beginning to be anxious about their impending separation from Jesus. They have experienced this when they abandoned Him during His Passion. They have experienced a devastating separation from Jesus. How will life be without Jesus? 
Jesus loves his disciples so much that he assures them of his abiding presence in their lives and mission. He uses the image of the relationship between the vine and the branches, a relationship of abiding, pruning, and bearing fruit. Abiding. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as the branches, just as the branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. Jesus initiated a deep sense of connectedness with his disciples. This is a connectedness from which they drew great strength. At one point, Jesus even promised his disciples, I will be with you until the end of time. A Jesuit author once wrote, The autumns of our lives remind us to cling to the Lord and more than ever to rely on Him. It is an often forgotten truth because of the leaves, flowers, fruits, and nests that often clutter our lives. We are just the branch, but our Lord Jesus, He is the tree, He is the vine. Saint Teresa of Avila tells the story of one of her religious experiences involving the Christ child himself. According to the story, one day at the convent, she meets a mysterious child coming down the stairs. The child stops in his tracks and asks her who she is. Teresa of Jesus, she replies, before asking, and who are you? The child looks at her and says, I am Jesus of Teresa. Not only does our relationship define us as His, but the Lord loves us so much that He does the unthinkable. He also allows our relationship to define Him. By claiming us as His, He makes Himself ours. Pruning Everyone that bears fruit, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. Jesus points out the value and necessity of pruning even the choicest of vines. Pruning involves removing a plant, a plant's suckers, which too often drain off important vitality and limit the vine's ability to produce abundant fruit. Whatever is not life-giving and, and mission-serving needs to be pruned. But pruning is always painful. Like a potter, the Lord sends the rough edges to produce a, mag a magnificent work of art. There must be pruning of our selfish ways 
sinful inclinations, and arrogant behavior. Parents do this to their children. Teachers do this to their students. Masters do this to their disciples. Pruning is always an act of love. Bearing fruit. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit because without me you can do nothing. A testament to the fidelity of the branches to the vine is bearing fruit. Last Sunday, Jesus said to his friends, They will know that you are my disciples by your love for one another. Indeed, the early Christian community's fidelity to listening to God's word, to the breaking of the bread, to prayer, and to fellowship, yielded compassion to the needy. Christians were ready to sell their possessions in order to respond to the needs of the poor. Stephen, the first martyr, inspired many with his act of forgiveness while he was being persecuted in imitation of the Lord Jesus. Abiding pruning, and bearing fruit. These are the things very much needed to live a truly Christian life. It is with, deep, with a deep sense of gratitude that I join you this morning on the occasion of my investiture as Grand Prior of Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre. Every Holy Saturday morning, the Church keeps vigil at the tomb of Christ. We reflect on one of the shortest lines in the Creed, He descended into hell. Christ descended into the abode of the dead. For the Greeks and the Jews, death is entering the place of extreme loneliness, isolation, and separation. Jesus descends into the Shul, the Hades, the abode of the dead, not as a mighty superhero or a powerful king. He goes into the abode of loneliness, isolation, and separation as someone who has just experienced being abandoned by his disciples, rejected by his people. On the cross, he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He also entered the experience of ultimate isolation, death. That is why the sepulcher, the tomb, is a reminder of this act of solidarity, of communion. Realizing this, we can really pray, Lord, I know you are near. Where can I run from your love? If I climb to the heavens, you are there. If I fly to the sunrise or sail beyond the sea, still I find you there. Cardinal Tagle once shared his reflections 
on Christ's experience of death. He said, What we do not want to enter, that moment of extreme loneliness, isolation, separation, now becomes a moment of Jesus' communion. I will not leave you alone. I have died for you. And every person who dies will never be alone. And we say that he went to the place of the dead. The place of isolation has become a place of communion. Who can separate us from Christ? No one, because Christ refuses to leave us alone, even in death. Let us pray that we too, members of the order, may learn communion and solidarity as our way of life as our constant opportunity to be like Jesus and to love like Jesus. Amen. Please all stand. United as one body of worshipers in the Lord, we bring our needs with confidence before God our Father. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the unity which comes from Christ, the true vine, may draw all Christians to his church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That priests, religious, and missionaries may be committed to their vocation in the church and remain united with Christ in their work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those tried by life's difficulties may be faithful to Christ and his gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may see Christ as the source of strength and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed, especially Knight Ramon Ozaita Jr., Dame Concepcion Montoya, and Dame Mercedes Oliver, may remain in Christ forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, without you we can do nothing. Hear our prayers and keep us in your love. We ask this. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Oh 
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise which we offer to your majesty in commemoration of the blessed martyr Saint John the First, that it may lead us to obtain pardon and confirm us in perpetual thanksgiving through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr, Saint John the First, poured out like Christ's to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. We are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, 
and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Please rise. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. By the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. We have received your heavenly gifts, rejoicing at this feast day, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that we witness divine in this divine banquet, proclaim the death of your Son. May Mary to be partakers with the holy martyrs in his resurrection and his glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Can we invite Lieutenant Knight Commander Ambassador Quisha to come to the lectern to lead the prayer of the Knights and Dames? Please all stand and read together with the Lieutenant the prayer. Please pray together with me. Lord, for your five wounds that we carry on our insignia, we pray. Give us the strength to love all whom your Father has created, and more so our enemies. Free our soul and heart from sin, from partiality, from egoism, and from fear, so that we can be worthy of your sacrifice. Let your Spirit descend upon us all the knights and dames of the Holy Sepulchre, so that it may render us as convinced and sincere ambassadors of peace and love among our brothers and sisters, and especially among all those who think they do not believe in you. Give us faith to face all the pains of daily life and to deserve one day to approach humbly but without fear your presence. Amen. Amen. Can we call on Knight Jose Enriquez de los Reyes de la Peñas, representing the invested knights and dames, to deliver the message of gratitude? His Excellency, Knight of the Grand Cross, Ambassador Jesus P. Tambunting, OBE. His Excellency, Knight Commander, Ambassador Jose L. Quisha, Jr. His Excellency, Knight Commander, Most Reverend Socrates Villegas, DD. His Excellency, Knight Commander, Most Reverend Jose S. Palma, DD. Grand Prior, His Eminence, Jose Puerte Cardinal Adventula, Jr. Apostolic Noncho, His Excellency Knight Commander, Most Reverend Charles John Brown, D.D. On behalf of all my fellow new knights and dames, I would like to express our sincerest and greatest gratitude for admitting and welcoming us in this noble ecclesial mission. It is a great honor for all of us to be able to serve the Church and to be able to dedicate our lives with such commitment to profession, our love and faith in Christ. In this very special way, and to be able to be part of preserving the great richness of our faith's history, as we live it out in the present day. We look forward to taking part in the sharing of this great mission by opening new horizons of hope to the world and ultimately being an extension of God's peace by serving with faithfulness, generosity, love, and respect. Once again, Thank you for having chosen us to take part in this mission of the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem and for blessing us all with your presence and prayers. 
To God be all honor and glory forever. Thank you. His Eminence, Cardinal Jose Vincula, His Excellencies, Archbishop Charles Brown, Archbishop Socrates Villegas, Archbishop Jose Palma, Bishop Milo Hubert Vergara, Monsignor Jerry Santos, Father Rio Galoy, other members of the clergy, our newly invested knights and dames, family members and guests of our investees, our newly promoted Knights and Dames Commanders, Ambassador Jesus Tambunting, our Lieutenant of Honor, and other Knights and Dames, good morning to all of you. First of all, I wish to thank His Excellency Archbishop Charles Brown, Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines, and an esteemed member of this Irish Lieutenancy of the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre Jerusalem, for having officiated at the formal installation of our Grand Prior, his Eminence Jose Cardinal at Vincula. It has been more than two years since our Grand Prior of Honor, His Eminence Luis Antonio Cardinal Tagli left the Philippines to assume a new post in the Vatican as Prefect of the Congregation for the Evangelization of Peoples. I'm grateful to um, Archbishop Soc Villegas for having performed the functions of our Grand Prior in the absence of one. We welcome and congratulate His Eminence Cardinal Jose Vincula, our Grand Prior, and thank him for presiding over the investiture ceremony which we, heard, which we held earlier. Having formally admitted 14 new members into the Philippine Lieutenancy, we bring our membership in the Philippine Lieutenancy close to 100 for the first time since our inception in 1958. I'm also pleased to note that first, for the first time in 11 years, we have admitted an ecclesiastical member, His Excellency Bishop Milo Hubert Vergara, Bishop of Pasig. And I'm grateful to Helen and T.G. Limcauco for having invited Bishop Milo to join the order, and we thank Bishop Milo for having accepted the invitation. However, I'm sorry to report that four of our members, namely Ambassador Frank Alba, former Lieutenant, Knight Roman Azaita Jr. and two dames, Mercedes Ched Oliver and Concepcion Chit Montoya passed away during the past year due to COVID-19 and other diseases. I wish to thank all the concelebrants of the Mass which we had today, led by His Eminence, uh, Cardinal Jose Adwincula. And in the interest of time, I will not name all of them, but I would like to acknowledge Monsignor Jerry Santos, Parish Priest of St. Peter's and Paul Parish in Makati, and Father Rio Galoy, Parish Priest of Santuario de San Antonio in San, Santuario de San Antonio in Forbes, because they were instrumental in convincing a large number of our new investees to apply for admission to the order. I also wish to thank Father Rico, Father Jack, and all the other members of the Liturgical Commission, as well as the seminarians who have assisted us in the installation, investiture, and vigil ceremonies. I wish to express our appreciation to the choir for the beautiful songs they rendered during the Mass, the lectors who performed the readings, and to all those who assisted us. Last but certainly not the least, I wish to acknowledge the hard work, patience, and perseverance of Miss Nina Santiago, who single-handedly assisted all of our investees and was responsible for making all the arrangements for the installation investiture, vigil ceremony, and the lunch reception, which will follow right after the Mass. Let us please give Nina a big hand.
I also want to take this opportunity to congratulate all our new, our newly invested uh, knights and dames, as well as the newly promoted knight and dame commanders. Let's give them a big hand too. Before I end, I wish to remind our newly invested knights and dames that it is the order itself that gives primary importance to the vocation to holiness of its members and of deepening the spiritual progress of each and every person in the environment in which they live and practice their faith. As Pope Francis underlined to the members of the Grand Magisterium, the lieutenants and magistral delegates during the consulta in Rome in November 28, and I quote, the continuous growth of the order depends on your unceasing and ever renewed effort. It is important not to forget that the principal aim of the order lies in the spiritual growth of its members. Therefore, any success of your initiatives cannot be separate from the appropriate religious formation programs addressed to every night and every day so that they may consolidate their own indispensable relationship with the Lord Jesus, especially in prayer, in meditation on sacred scriptures, and in furthering their knowledge of the doctrine of the church." Unquote. In his book entitled, and I quote, The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume, our Cardinal Grand Master, His Eminence Cardinal Fernando Filoni, Filoni talks about the spirituality of the question order of the Holy Sepulchre, which he says is not just an honorific or chivalric order. He asserts that it is a vital and active body with responsibilities and commitments that have been gradually entrusted to it by the pontiffs who re reorganized it. I would encourage our newly invested knights and dames to read this book of our Grand Master, a copy of which will be furnished to you. In yesterday's vigil ceremony, Archbishop Sok Villegas gave a beautiful homily about the spirituality of the order, and I requested him if we could disseminate to our members the reflections he shared with us. May I take this opportunity to remind all our knights and dames that May being the month dedicated to our Blessed Mother, it is a tradition for Filipino Catholic families to make a pilgrimage to the shrine of our Blessed Mother. Dame Commander Esther Magleo has organized a hybrid pilgrimage to the Basilica of Our Lady of Manawag in Pangasinan, where we shall be virtually welcomed by the Archbishop of Lingayen, Dagupan, His Excellency Archbishop Socrates Villegas on May 30, 2022, starting at 10 a.m. For those who cannot join in person, they may join this pilgrimage virtually via Zoom. This, the link will be provided in our Viber group and through email. Thank you to all of you for your presence at the installation of our Grand Prior, the investiture of our new members, and the concelebration of the Holy Eucharist. Please don't forget that lunch will be served at the Centennial Hall A of the Manila Hotel, which is not far from the Manila Cathedral. See you soon. Thank you, and good day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Oh
Can we invite His Eminence Cardinal Advincula, His Excellencies Archbishop Brown, Archbishop Villegas, Archbishop Palma, Bishop Vergara, Ambassador Quisha, and Ambassador Tambunting, with Father Rico and the seminarians, 